policymakers and politicians around the world are taking extraordinary steps to blunt the economic impact of the coronavirus pandemic. We saw a risk to the, to the outlook for the economy and chose to act. We decided on a comprehensive package of monetary policy measures. We'll see prompt action again when we need to take it. Cutting interest rates and cutting checks to stimulate the global economy. We're ready to do whatever we have to. We must act like any wartime government. This is the calm before the storm, before the surge. But the enemy is there, invisible and moving forward. We'll provide $2,000 a month for the next four months. But how far will central banks and governments go? And is it enough? Join us as we dig into Deploying Financial Firepower, a coronavirus special program. Hello, I'm Michael McKee. As the coronavirus crisis continues, central banks are playing a major role in countering the threat with unprecedented policy actions. The Federal Reserve has gone big and gone fast with rate cuts and lending programs. Some worry they may be wasting precious ammunition. We spoke with Fed presidents from around the country to get their view on where the economy is going and the tools they'll use to support it. Near term, uh, as we come out of this, uh, interest rates will, will probably stay very low uh, for quite a while. Um, I, we are taking on more debt as a nation, uh, but we're taking it on at very low interest rates, so that part uh, should work good, well for the near term. Um, you know, as we get further out past the crisis, uh, we'll have to evaluate our, our fiscal strategy and, and see what, but that'll be up to Congress uh, what they want to do. Uh, it's a big country. We can carry, you know, 10 percent more debt. I, you know, it's not ideal, but uh, we can certainly do it. And if there was ever a time uh, where you wanted to uh, do something like this, now is that time. Uh, one last question here. Someone said when you first cut rates and set up lending programs, you were throwing the kitchen sink at things, and then you cut rates again and set up more programs and threw the kitchen sink again. Uh, do you have more than one sink? Or do you throw the same sink over and over again? It basically, what's left in the toolbox? Well, I think the, the bottom line is that this, the, these 13-3 authorities uh, that are in the Federal Reserve Act are very powerful. And uh, because they're, they're set up uh, to allow the Fed to do lending in unusual and exigent circumstances with the consent of the Treasury, and so... It, you can do a lot with that, and I think that's what we're seeing right now. And if we had to do more with that, we could. It's a Board of Governors program. It's not an FOMC program. It's a board, and we do need Treasury authority. But in uh, special situations like this one, and, and what could be more special than this one, it makes a lot of sense to go ahead and use that power and, uh, and see if we can smooth out uh, this ride as we get to the other side of this virus. You're going to have perhaps uh, trillions in lending to American companies, big and small, and uh, that'll be at near zero rates. Are you ever going to be able to move rates higher given the risk to borrowers or interest rates now, for now at least, finished as a Fed tool? Well, I think uh, the federal funds rate is now as low as it can get without going negative. My own personal view is that we should probably avoid having uh, negative short-term interest rates. Um, so that vehicle, I think we will not be able to use in the near term. But these facilities are providing um, significant amount of stimulus. The purchases of long-term treasury and mortgages are providing stimulus. So we're bringing long-term rates down. Um, but there are limits to how much these programs uh, will be able to get the economy running. And some of this relies on fiscal policy being effective. So we just had a very large bill passed. Um, it wouldn't surprise me if we're going to need more fiscal stimulus, given the nature of the shock. All the bills, including the, the fiscal bills, are to keep uh, individuals functioning and being able to pay their bills, small businesses functioning, municipalities functioning, larger businesses functioning, so that uh, when the, the virus is defeated, we can walk and then we can run and then we can sprint out of this. Uh, and so um, uh, in that regard, I don't know how inflationary it will be, 
because it's more relief than stimulus. Uh, I think a lot of the forces, unfortunately, on the other end, as we come out of this, might in fact be deflationary and that we're likely to have a spike uh, in the unemployment rate. We will work that down. We'll have more excess capacity. I think a number of those forces actually will be deflationary. One of your colleagues, speaking of unemployment, says we could see 30 percent and a 50 percent decline in GDP in the second quarter. What kind of numbers do you see? So our, our forecast to the Dallas Fed is, uh, is, is not on that scale and that uh, we, we think you'll see a substantial contraction in uh, the second quarter. Our own estimates is it won't be, uh, it won't be that big, but it, it, it'll be, but it could be in the 20s uh, in our view on an, and just to point out, on an annualized basis it will be uh, in the 20s, and we can have some decline also, at least in the first part of the third quarter. And our own internal forecast here at the Dallas Fed is you could see the unemployment rate peak in the low to mid-teens, but we would expect that would quickly, um, be de would quickly decline, we would hope, to something like 7 or 8 percent uh, by the end of the year, and then we'd have to spend 2021 working that unemployment rate down. Uh, but we'll have an elevated level of unemployment uh, for sure as, uh, as we come out of this. We'd uh, had job growth for, gosh, well over a decade. Uh, and it is, uh, it's hard to see the numbers turn negative. But I think everyone uh, expects a very serious uh, downward tilt on the job side. And this is just the first indicator. Unfortunately, I think the employment numbers are going to get worse before they get better. Yeah, I'm getting uh, forecasts in from some economists that suggest in April we'd see anywhere from 10 to 20 million jobs lost. Does that seem crazy to you? Does the, the Bank of Richmond have any kind of forecast at this point? Well, this is so unprecedented, I think. Uh, point forecasting is a pretty uh, silly thing to try to do. But what I do try to do is just look at the numbers uh, just to get some perspective on it. Restaurants and bars in this country employ about 12 million people. Uh, physical retail, excluding food and drug, another 11. Travel and entertainment, another five. So even in those three sectors, which you know have been hit unbelievably hard, you can get to 30 million pretty quickly. So I don't think numbers like 10 or 20 million are out of the pale. This is a public health crisis. This is actually quite different than uh, some of the economic disruptions that we've seen in the past. And as a consequence, I think there's the possibility that once the public health crisis has is, is gotten under control and we don't have that issue anymore, the economy may rebound actually quite robustly. And, uh, you know, the chair said yesterday uh, on, on the news that uh, the economy started in a good place. And I think that's exactly right. And that's something that uh, we all should keep in mind. And the goal for almost all of these pr projects and programs is to try to make sure that when we get on the other side of this, the economy is as close to that place as, it want to, as possible so that uh, when uh, recovery and, and, and health is not a major concern, uh, the economy can really start kicking back on all the cylinders and, and running quite strongly. So my hope is that um, if we do the responsible things and take care of our public health problem, that the economy can rebound and some of the shortfalls that you're talking about uh, wind up not being as, as deep as, as they could be. In Europe, the ECB under new president Christine Lagarde plans more than 750 billion euros in asset purchases along with other policies to fight the coronavirus, while at the same time looking for more fiscal action. This time uh, now the action uh, is uh, essentially needed uh, uh, from the member states uh, and uh, from the European Union political decision makers in a sense that uh, we need uh, a strong fiscal policy response uh, in parallel with uh, a strong monetary policy response. Uh, fiscal yeah. policy, if uh, directed uh, uh, rightly, then it can have a very substantial impact uh, on the real economy and uh, quite quickly. Yes. Um, just to stick with the monetary policy uh, a moment, Olly Rain, and in, on the topic of taking further action, does having PEPP with essentially no limits on how much debt you can buy remove the need for launching outright monetary transactions? These are not uh, 
alternatives, uh, and uh, I would not like to speculate at this stage uh, whether we would uh, need to use uh, the outright monetary transactions uh, or not. Uh, it is uh, one part of uh, our toolbox, uh, and uh, as you may recall or you may read from my book, uh, it was uh, a critical decision in uh, August, uh, September 2012, following Manu Draghi's uh, now legendary speech uh, in London during the Olympic Games uh, in, in July 2012, when he said that uh, within our mandate uh, we will do whatever it takes to ensure the future of the of the euro. So then the ONT was the was the tool, but uh, you may recall that uh, that also requires uh, a program under the European Stability Mechanism, and uh, this seems to have been rather contentious uh, among the member states uh, in their discussions uh, recently. Coming up, governments respond to an economic emergency with a huge commitment of fiscal stimulus. This is Bloomberg. Welcome back to a coronavirus special report, deploying financial firepower. While the need for fiscal stimulus is apparent to everyone, politics can get in the way of decisive action. Witness the back and forth between Republicans and Democrats on Capitol Hill over the $2 trillion stimulus package. What we needed to do was to change it from corporate trickle down to worker bubble up. And in that way, it said that we do recognize that certain industries are going to need federal funds. And we want those, those industries to know that we have, there are conditions uh, to make sure that workers are protected, that they stay employed, that they're on the payroll, and that their, their rights are protected. It's very important. Strong infusion of funds for small business, we're very excited about that. And that is, for the first time, some grants in small business uh, administration or, and that process facilitated greatly to aid small businesses, which are, as you know, the lifeblood of our economy, of job creators, the wealth creators, so very, very important. So again, uh, many of these changes that changed it from trickle down to bubble up uh, took a, a, a matter of 48 or so hours, but that would not be called a delay, that would be called an improvement. We'll get through this. We've supported unemployment insurance benefits for the states. We're working closely with governors to make sure that those that are impacted uh, have the support uh, to, uh, to see uh, their family, uh, to see their businesses, and to see their communities uh, through the course of the coronavirus. And uh, we really do believe that as Americans put into practice uh, the president's coronavirus guidelines, 30 days to slow the spread, uh, that will every single day be one day closer to putting the coronavirus behind us. Uh, our priority is health. Our priority is the health and well-being and, and the lives of the American people supporting our incredible health care workers. Uh, the president has every confidence that as we help people through this time, uh, that the economy will come back stronger than ever before. But we'll stay focused on We'll stay focused on defeating this virus and giving the American people and our health care workers uh, the tools to do just that. Europe has had its own political clashes. The EU is trying to develop some common measures to support the economy, while many member nations have developed their own stimulus packages. Even Germany has boarded the stimulus train with a 750 billion euro package. We have all the firepower we need and we will use it. This is the message we give to anyone. And uh, it was always the idea behind our uh, fiscal strategies. When I discussed on the question about the question why, why it might make sense to reduce the public debt, it was also, it was always my, my argument saying, it is because there might be a crisis and then we need the strength to do the necessary things. Now we are in a crisis we haven't expected because it's uh, something that uh, came to mankind uh, all of a sudden in a way. But now we, 
now we have the strength and we will use it. So how high could you go? Would you be willing to, if necessary, go to 90% of GDP or 100% of GDP? It makes no sense to speculate about numbers like this. It's just necessary to know that we will not be enforced to do some, to, not to do something which we understand as sensible, because all the things that are necessary that will work will be done. Hong Kong had early success containing the virus, but now it's seeing a second wave, and the financial hub's leaders are planning another round of fiscal relief. We, we, uh, we are sort of uh, uh, looking at the situation on a daily basis. Uh, yes, uh, a month ago we have launched, uh, in fact, uh, two major initiatives, one covered by our annual budget, which is which we have put in the biggest uh, sort of anti cyclical sort of uh, incentive into the uh, economy, including the um, uh, 10,000 Hong Kong dollar uh, sort of cash payout to every adult of Hong Kong residents that you have mentioned, plus other things. But the entire sort of a uh, budgetary sort of a uh, uh, injection is over 200 billion US equivalent. At the same time, we're also taking a targeted approach in that initial phase by setting up an anti-epidemic fund. Within that, uh, in addition to sort of helping medical professionals in fighting the battle in the forefront, we're also sort of supporting uh, eight to ten sort of sectors, including retail, traveling industry, guest house, uh, 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 and also conventional exhibition sort of activities. All are sort of trying to give uh, helping hands to the hard hit industries. So these are the initial two phases. But of course, as the um, epidemic sort of continues to spread and also the economy uh, putting to uh, more, more or less a standstill, uh, it is clear that, well, we need to do more. And hence, uh, the chief executive has announced that, well, we are looking into another yet another phase of economic relief, hopefully uh, to focus on both hard hit industry the employees and also sort of uh, in the eventuality give some injection to boost the economy when we are able to talk about sort of bouncing back. Coming up, will all this financial firepower be enough to offset the global slowdown? Opinions next. This is Bloomberg. Welcome back to a coronavirus special report, deploying financial firepower. We turn now to reaction from the business community to how central banks and governments are countering the coronavirus's impact on the global economy. You know, we have a GDP uh, in the United States, gross national product of uh, somewhere around 21 trillion, and we're probably gonna miss five trillion of it. This is massive uh, and it washes throughout society, whether it's governments that uh, will lose tax revenue, uh, the inability to pay people uh, and provide services. Uh, and this is happening uh, almost in a mandated way. Uh, fortunately, it's going to be temporary, uh, but it's putting stress on you know, every uh, business organization. Doesn't matter, uh, you know, whether it's Walt Disney or, or, or Macy's, uh, and uh, all are looking uh, to find uh, more ways of dealing with their uh, their current debt loads, paying their people, trying to keep people on, uh, and it's going to result in a lot of disruption and unemployment, as you see. Uh, fortunately, it's going to be temporary because the government uh, has stepped in uh, in, in a really uh, uh, huge way, uh, starting out with um, – uh, roughly $2 trillion of stimulus going to people. Uh, so if they're unemployed, they can have uh, higher incomes uh, than they ever would have expected in an unemployed situation. Uh, loans going out to companies, uh, to encouraging them uh, to hire people and forgiving those loans uh, for smaller companies if they do. Uh, uh, the government has also uh, done a remarkable job with the Federal Reserve. Uh, where they're providing liquidity, uh, and they're going to multiply that to two trillion dollars uh, with more loans, and there'll be more stimulus after this. 
had we spent the money or, or probably taken a hit uh, or given, you know, transferred the risk to the airlines who would have taken a hit in January, we wouldn't be here today. The problem we have today is too much connectivity. They did not want to spend pennies in January. Now they're going to spend trillions. So, and, and if you delay more, you're going to spend even more. We don't know much about this disease. This is not a regular, uh, uh, it's not the flu, okay? It's much more uh, uh, untractable. We, we don't know enough about it. Uh, that therefore, it should be extra cautious. So saying, do this trade-off, this trade-off is a fake trade-off. I welcome the recommendation of the ECB, which will help relieve 30 billion of capital to support the economy. So clearly, I hope that banks will follow, and we have seen other banks following uh, the ECB recommendation this morning, beside Unicredit. I think it's important for banks to be here to support the economy. Banks are part of the solution in this crisis. What will be the conditions to resume dividends and buybacks on 2019 earnings? The ECB has asked that uh, we uh, uh, review uh, the condition after October 1st. If the economic environment has stabilized sufficiently, our board will reassess the possibility of paying the, uh, the financial year 19 dividend. So if the conditions are right, I see no reason why we would not pay the dividend. Is there anything that regulators now need to do to make sure that, that banks give enough loans? Is there anything else that they should be looking at? I think from the regulatory side, the regulators did already a lot. And uh, that's a, an outstanding work. They reacted very strongly and very fast. The monetary side has been doing a tremendous job as well. And I really commend the ECB for the, the strength, the speed, and the quality of the actions which have been taken by the ECB and uh, its uh, new president, uh, Mrs. Lagarde. I mean, very, very, very good job. Now, what we need to do is work with the team of the ECB, as well as the team of the different treasury in the countries, to make sure that the measures taken are properly implemented. So it's a more process-driven than policy-driven, but the processes are extremely important to make sure that the money and the support reach our clients. And that's the focus on the team. That's been the focus last week and the, the strong focus of the team this week. The actions that uh, were taken uh, are unprecedented and uh, they've been quite effective in uh, calming down uh, the funding markets, uh, particularly on the dollar side. And uh, I do think that maybe there are some small technicalities that needs to be addressed, but. Uh, I think that uh, central banks and, uh, and and governments have been acting uh, very efficiently at this stage. Of course, you know there is little uh, anybody can do about uh, fear, uh, and fear is probably one of the most uh, uh, dangerous uh, sentiment that you can have in this environment. Particularly, it's, it's not fear about markets; it's fear about health and and their lives, and therefore. There is very little uh, that uh, a central bank or a government can do short term to alleviate uh, this uh, major issue. That wraps up our program, Coronavirus, Deploying Financial Firepower. Stay tuned to Bloomberg TV and radio for continuing coverage. And check Bloomberg.com for the latest news and analysis 24 hours a day. I'm Michael McKee. This is Bloomberg.